What's up, guys, and welcome to the Affliction Warlock Guide for Patch 5.4. And here to talk all things Warlock with me, as always, is Aki. Aki, what's up? What's up, guys? And, guys, in this guide, what we're going to be covering is we're going to cover the talents, glyphs, stats and gems, add-ons, and then some additional information on how to play your Affliction Warlock going into 5.4. And as we've all seen, if any of you have been watching any of the uh, raid kill videos, um, the color purple is prevalent at the top of the meters. <laughs> <laughs> and Affliction is just one of those specs that, as you get gear, it gets more and more disgusting. Um, Aki, let's, you know, what what really is setting Affliction Warlocks and just Warlocks in general right now apart? And, like, why are they in such a good place right now? Is it just gear scaling, or what is it? It's, it's to do with gear scaling. It's kind of like Mages and Warriors, um, but not quite to the extent. Mages and Warriors always scale really hard towards the end of the expansion when you can start getting those really crazy stat percentages, you know, like high crit, high mastery, all that sort of thing. Warlock stays sort of strong early on and gets a little bit stronger towards the end. Um, but basically, we've had some nice changes to Affliction, which has made uh, some really nice quality of life improvements, which I'll go over a little bit later in the uh, in the extra info section. But perfect. Well, let's get right into it then. Let's go into talents Sweet. and what should we be talenting for 5.4? For 5.4, okay. So we've been over this. If you guys saw the other guides, but basically, Soul Leech at the moment is pretty meh. It's uh, it's pretty pretty much lackluster. Um, yeah, I think the biggest I've managed to build it up since the change is like 300k shield and that's without taking any damage for maybe a minute and a half or so so it's really not that great um, you're gonna get better survivability out of going through dark regen it's gonna restore 30% of your health um, over 12 seconds and also give you 25% increase to healing for 12 seconds so you know if you're gonna take some big damage your healers it's gonna make it easier for them to get you through that damage uh, on a two minute cooldown, just too good, I think. Soul Leech is just far too lackluster. Like, you'll be lucky to build it up to, on average, before you take damage in Siege of Agrimar, probably around 40 50k, right. which is, you know, that's nothing, so. And then level 30, are we, what are we using here? Level 30, uh, it's really diverse now, so you can use any of them, which are fine. It, it's really situational, depending on what encounter you're doing. Uh, Demonic Breath is nice, it's an AoE slow, it doesn't do any damage whatsoever, it just reduces the movement speed of all the mobs by 50% they get hit by it. Um, Mortal Coil is really good, it's probably your most, one that you're going to use the most for your survival. 45 second cooldown to give you 15% of your health back, so it's really nice on those sort of oh shit moments where you take a big spike of damage, you can just shoot that off at the boss, do some damage, get some health back. Um, if you need to do some help with some CCing, you can use Shadow Fury, just an AoE stun. So, uh, and it depends what you need for the fight, really. You just right. change them out. So. And 45? 45, same thing again. Soul Link got changed a little bit, so it used to be 50% of the damage, which made it really strong. Now it's 20% of the damage gets shared between uh, you and your pet. So... Not quite as great. I'm still a big fan of Sacrificial Pack. One minute cooldown for a huge shield. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a monster. It's, yeah, it's a monster shield. You're going to get like four or 500k damage absorbed from it on a one minute cooldown, which is plenty enough for most abilities. You know, you can soak mines on, on Juggernaut, that sort of thing with it. So, um, Dark Bargain, I haven't really found a use for it. To be honest, in Siege, <laughs> like it's uh, it's it's a really good talent. It's a three-minute cooldown for a 50% damage reduction, so it's pretty good. But you just don't need it. Like there's nothing in Siege of Ogrima where you need it. Um, so. Well, the absorb on a one-minute cooldown is just so. It's nice just too to good. Yeah. yeah, you know, like it's just way too way too good. So you get three of those off for effectively 1.2 million health absorbed on Sacrificial Pack, whereas on Dark Bargain you may absorb, you know, like 600k at max, so it's just not worth it. Level 60? 60, boring, nothing for PvE except Burning mm -hmm. Rush. Um, I'm doing well, not, I haven't used that at all. Blood Harb, nah, nah, nothing to use there, so. And Thank you, Burning Rush. 
75. Okay, so you're not going to use service or sacrifice for supremacy because of the way you used to be able to use sacrifice for affliction, but because of the way it got changed, where the power from your damage is actually in your dot ticks and not so much in your channel malefic grasp anymore, you don't need to use sacrifice. So it's always supremacy for your void, as uh, for your summon, your observer, sorry, or your void walker if you're soloing. So. Okay. And 90. 90, uh, this all got changed around, all three of them again are situational, um, so it depends what you need for the fight, Manoros Fury for Affliction isn't as great as it is for Demo, but it's still good, because your Seed of Corruption still does a lot of damage, it just, you're better off playing the new style of Affliction than using Seed of Corruption right. on mobs, you know, unless there's a ton of mobs, but I mean, I'm talking, you know, 10 plus for a little while upwards, you know, like it's yeah. not going to be worth using. Kill Jaden's coming, the Lazy Man Warlock, you, I would have said this in like the last couple of times, like in videos, that it's really separates the good Warlocks from the other Warlocks, you know, that relied on Kill Jaden's coming to do damage. Um, now it only does your filler while moving, so you'll be casting Malefic Grass, but like I said, with the new Affliction, Malefic Grass doesn't really do a lot of damage, so... Your best bet here, really, is going to be between Manoros Fury or my personal favorite, Archimon's Darkness. Basically gives you two charges on your Dark Soul. Uh, what that equates to, on most fights in Siege of Ogrimmar, the shorter ones, it's going to be an extra Dark Soul per fight. It just allows you to be able to, you know, have a Dark Soul on demand for when you get more Trinket procs, so you can make more use out of it. So. Gotcha. Uh, the longer the fight goes, like say Garrosh, you get way more uses out of Akamon's Darkness. It's, I think I worked it out to be about two or three extra ones on uh, Garrosh, for example. So, wow. Just pick what you need. If you need to do Heavy AoE, Manoros Fury. Uh, if you don't need to do Heavy AoE, probably about 90% of the time you're going to take Akamon's Darkness. Alright, and Glyphs. What are we glyphing? Glyphs still didn't get anything good from 5.4. Um, <laughs> Affliction Warlocks have really been rolling two glyphs only for most of the Pandarian content, which is Siphon Life and Glyph of Soulstone. Um, there is a little bit more depending on what you need, so you can go Glyph of Curse of Exhaustion. So you can get a 70% slow, it's probably the best slow in the game. And if you Soul Burn it, then it's an AoE slow. Um, but again, haven't really had a chance to right. you know, use it on anything. Right. Um, the one I would say that you're probably going to use uh, would be Curse of the Elements. It now hits two additional targets nearby. So if your job is to put up this, the Curse of Elements, then that's a good, good one to have. Um, otherwise, if you've got Rogues or other Warlocks in your raid, make them do it so that you can use your globals on something else. Right. And you can really scum back like I do. Perfect. Um, <laughs> There's Glyph of Eternal Resolve, okay, so what this does is it takes your uh, Unending Resolve, which is a Warlock talent, 3 minute cooldown for 40% damage reduction, so it's basically a Warlock Shield Wall. Um, what it does is it takes the active ability away and just gives you a passive 10% damage reduction. Um, I guess that could be good for some people that aren't always as good at staying out of stuff. I myself prefer to use the active, right. so that if it's you know if I need to soak something or if I see something too late, I can pop that and you know not get insta gibbed by anything. Right. Uh, what else is there? Ligatry like health stone you could use. Life tap is really good for Malkarok. Um, you should always use the life tap clip on Malkarok and Siege of Ogrima. Otherwise. Yeah, nothing really else you're gonna use, so Fair pretty enough. lackluster. <laughs> all right, and then miners obviously don't really matter at all. Miners, that just yeah, you just use whatever you want. Um, so well is good. I don't know, it's whatever you want to use. Fair enough. And so let's go into now. Let's go into stats and gems. What are we looking at stat and gem wise? Stat and gem wise, the case okay, so a lot of things have changed. You're not gonna be just going haste, 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 haste like we were 5.3. Um, a lot of that was based around because of how RPPM worked. They've changed that a little bit now, and a lot of the new trinkets aren't based on RPPM. Right. Uh, they have ICDs or internal cooldowns, 
So the haste isn't going to be as effective. I would say for the majority of you guys out there, you're going to look to stick at the 9778 haste breakpoint and then just stack mastery on top of that. Okay, so 9778 for your haste and then just stack mastery on top of that. Um, obviously, you want to get her capped and, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, basically. Mastery is your strongest stat at the moment, so it's giving you extra damage on the dot ticks. So. Gotcha. Go for mastery. And then let's go into, obviously, uh, the gemming that we're using is for greens. We're using the Lightning Wild Jade. Um, no. No? We changed that around a little bit. So this is because the mastery change, you're going to be using mastery hybrids in your gems now. So for blue slash green gems, you want to be going for what's the Sensei. Uh, Wild Jade, which is the hit mastery instead of hit haste, basically. Um, yellow sockets, you're going to be using Fractured. And red sockets, you're going to be using the Artful Vermilion Onyx, which is the int mastery gem. So, okay. so, those are the ones you want. Now, what if you're not at your haste breakpoint that you're talking about? Then would you? I, would your first goal be to hit that breakpoint? Yeah, you want to get that haste breakpoint first. Or then yeah, go because mastery. that... Yeah. That is giving you an extra tick uh, when, you, when you've got the Raid Haste buff, so the Spell Haste buff. That's giving you an extra tick on your Agony, which is your most damaging, most powerful dot. So getting to that is going to be pretty powerful. And because there's a lot of uh, multi-target fights, having more dot ticks is a lot better than having more powerful dot ticks. So. Right. Yeah, so get the 9778. So if you need to gem in the way to get to that, then by all my, by all means, use uh, the Lightning Wild Jade, which is the Hit Haste Gem, or the Reckless Vermilion Onyx, which is the orange one, which is Int and Haste. So okay. if you need to get to that brain point. Otherwise, get to the brain point, then just go all mastery. All right, and then for add-ons for Affliction, what are you, what it would be your add-ons that you would recommend? Add-ons, you need something to track your buffs. It's very important that you get something that tracks the procs that you get. So something like Tell Me When, which I believe you've made a guide on how to yep. use already. Yep. yep. So if you just go and have a look through some of Nash's old videos, you'll see guides there on how to set up the Tell Me When. Um, and the other other important thing you're going to need is AFDOTS add-on, which I've talked about in some of the other guides. Um, basically, it shows you the remaining time on each dot that you have, so Agony, Corruption, Unstable, Affliction. It will also show you the power of your dots, um, and then give you a relative number depending on what power you're at now. So, for example, say you put on your fresh set of dots, that would be 100, okay, because that's equal to the power of what you're at now. If you get a proc, that 100 will change to uh, a different number depending on how powerful the proc is. So if, for example, you have UVLS and you get crits, that 100 will change to something like 150, okay? Which means if you put dots on now, they're going to be more powerful than the ones that you had on originally. Right. All right, so you want to be doing, you need something like that so that you can keep a track of what power your dots are at. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's too much else really that you need. As long as you got those, something to track your procs, something to watch your dots. Um, yeah, that's that's really all you need. <laughs> so, uh, what else could you? you obviously, I mean, you're gonna gonna want some kind of boss mod right. as well to help yeah. you out. You know, to let you know with certain abilities so you can get uh prepared for it so but as far as warlock specific that's pretty much it yeah that's pretty much it warlock specific it's not really too much else you want so all right and then um additional info like what would be you know any other tips and tricks of the warlock i, I guess we should probably talk rotation um yep. a little bit so let's go into rotation okay so rotation is basically uh you want to keep your haunt up Okay, so your Haunt now does a lot more damage when you initially cast it, but it also makes your dots do more damage as well. Any dots that are on there when Haunt is on, they're going to tick for more damage. So you want to keep your Haunt up um, as much as you can. Um, but otherwise, it's basically about maintaining 
the most powerful dots that you can at the time uh, on your target and then using Malefic Grasp as your channeler when you're above uh, you know, above 20% health on the mob. When it goes below 20% health, you want to switch to using Drain Soul. It does a little bit more damage. It's I don't know where you want to get into it because I really don't like using Drain Soul and Malefic Grasp. But they do about the same amount of damage. Um, however, Drain Soul, every every two times that it takes dam it does damage, it's going to give you a Soul Shard back so that you can, you know, when you're in that execute phase, you can practically keep Haunt up on 100%. So, uh, that's basically it. And as for tips and tricks, with the new change to what's really changed about Affliction is your Soul Swap, okay? So this is going to get a little bit tricky to explain, but Soul Swap by itself without using Soul Burn will make a copy of the dots and you will store them for three seconds. So you have three seconds to use your Soul Swap again onto another target. Okay, so example one, your boss has dots on there that are really powerful. Say they are 400 power dots according to AF dots. What you're going to do is you're going to Soul Swap off of that boss, so you're going to make a copy onto yourself while the dots remain on the boss, and then you're going to put that copy onto the next mob, so you've effectively got two targets ticking with those initial really powerful buffs, really powerful dots, sorry, when all those uh, buffs and stuff procced at the start, you make a copy of them, put them onto another mob, then what you can do if there's more mobs is you can make a copy of the copy, okay, this is where it's getting a little bit tricky, but you're making a copy of the copy and you're going to put that onto the next target. So then you'll have three sets of those really powerful dots running. Hmm. And that's when yeah. you see just the Warlock initial burst on like multi-target fights just go yeah. absolutely bonkers. Is if you yeah. doing that. If you want to see how it's done, look at our like heroic protective kill. Um, yeah, well, and I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put some of the meters from some of our uh, some some from some of our better attempts on some of the bosses for you guys, yeah. uh, just so that you guys can see, um, you know, what it can do. Yeah, what this new way of putting dots on can do, and just how far in the dust you can leave every single other person in your raid. Yeah, um, if you do this correctly, I mean it's just ridiculous how powerful and if you do this it, is. you do it correctly, and you watch people go through their opening burst, and they try to catch up, and it looks like they're gonna beat you, and then they just fall off, and you keep going really strong. <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's really fun, guys. But yeah, have a look through some of them. You'll see the uh, animation for it of me pulling the dots off, putting them onto the next target, and just spreading around. So that again goes into it for the whole fight, you know, like what you want to do is say, again, we're getting multi-target, multi you then, you know, you're two or three minutes into the boss fight, you get some procs going, and they're more powerful than what you've got on all the bosses at the time. You're going to buff up one boss with your powerful dots, pull them off, and then spread them to everything else. So you're basically, your idea is to buff, get your buff dots on one target, right, and then pull them off and spread those to everything else. That's the key to playing Affliction in this new patch. Okay. And, uh, guys, again, if there's any questions that you have about the uh, the Tell Me When add-ons or any of the UI add-ons um, that we use, typically me and Aki pretty much use the same ones for practically everything. Yeah. Um, we do have, there is an entire playlist for all the uh, UI stuff. If you want to see... Um, any of the other guides for any classes? We're, we're trying to work on the other uh, Warlock guides, so keep an eye out for those as well. Uh, so make sure that you're following the channel to let you know when those guides come out as well. We're going to try to get those out to you as soon as we can. Uh, yep. But, Aki, anything else that we need before we go? No, just remember to soul stone your tank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll see you guys next time.